talked about it yesterday, just that chip on your shoulder. Everyone talking about a neutral AFC championship game, not even thinking about you guys. How much did that motivate you coming into this? You better send those refunds. <laughs> I'm from the city where they gotta play us. Gotta play Fuck a up. coin flip, it's time to pay up. To Don't cross the up. middle, 21 in the cut. We ain't hiding from nobody, run and tell them it's up. I'm from the city where they gotta play us. Fuck a coin flip, it's time to pay up. Don't cross the middle, 21 in the cut. We ain't hiding from nobody, run and tell them it's up. Back to back champs, kings of the north with it. Thinking they can hang with us, the lane jumped out the porch with it. Long bomb to chase every Sunday, watch him go and get it. Double up on him, then we gon' double down on T. Higgins. Then throw Boyd in the mix. Now you really iffy Every Sunday showing boys how they really gritty They try to shuffle up the game on us but they ain't icky Flip the coin, kick the toe, Roger to go and get it Never know what's gonna happen when Joe drop back He gets shiesty in the pocket, I get shiesty on the track Nobody on the team, all pro, that's all cap Most all around team in the NFL, that's all fact Ain't came across nobody yet, it seemed like they can hang with us They said we couldn't be Buffalo, but see how we call they bluff Underdogs every week, they keep on trying to label us Put your money on us, even if Vegas don't favor us No matter what, we really came up now, it's hard to fail I dare you come across that middle, Von gon' ring your bell I know we under they skin, them boys built frail Eli Apple out there chirping like a next tail You don't want Sam and Trey to come off them ends Rita clogging up the middle like a big body bend. Right behind them Logan and Pratt, the turn over twins Jesse base in the backfield just to clean up the loose ends We just drafted the camera, draft the hill Instant gratification every time that they on the field We can't go back to what we was, cause that's the losing way It's been hard to throw on us since we picked up a woozy, eh? It's like win after win, feel like we could really do it Zach Taylor doing the same for the city, I give it to him And I bet Samaji will find a hole if you give it to him Hayden Hurst don't need a hole, he just plan on running through him Just hand it off to 28 and let him do the dash Getting hit by BJ Hill probably feel like a car crash Every week it seem like Lou digging deeper in his bag And if the game on the line, all my favorite money match I'm from the city where they gotta play us Fuck a coin flip, it's time to pay up Don't cross the middle, 21 in the cut And we ain't hiding from nobody, run and tell them it's up I'm from the city where they gotta play us Fuck a coin flip, it's time to pay up Don't cross the middle, 21 in the cut And we ain't hiding from nobody, run and tell them it's up What do we say, dog? That's right, y'all. That gotta play us. What's going on? Welcome to the show. This is Sports with Strawberry Ice. I'm your host, the Ice Man, Jeff Trunapol. And as always, I bring you sports from a West Side point of view, right here in the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio, home of the back-to-back -back AFC North champion, Cincinnati Bengals. Not to be a favorite. If you found that show, hit that like and subscribe button. Smash that thumbs up. You guys are awesome. I'm up to 2,335 subscribers. As always, I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you're watching on Facebook or Twitter and you or X, whatever you call it, and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Please go to the YouTube channel, Sports with Strawberry Ice. Hit the subscription button. Hit the bell for the notification. Every time I go live, you'll be notified. Also, exclusive in the YouTube chat crew, we're doing Super Chats. So if you got a question for Coach Mark Duff, they're, you know, they got to play us. Give me a super chat or to a support show. Give me a super chat. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, I'm coming to come to you live from this glorious place down here. It's the Ice Cave. The Ice Cave is brought to you by T Properties. T Properties, quality housing for quality people. Check out the website at www.tpropertiesllc.com for all your rental property management needs and your rental needs. And you know it. I say it all the time. I wear it all the time. We hit the jackpot when we got Joe Burrow. If you want the jackpot Joey merchandise, the shirts, the hats, the banners, any of that stuff, please go to the jackpotjoey9.com. Portion of the proceeds go to the Joe Burrow Hunger Relief Fund and the Joe Burrow Foundation. The beer is at Brink Brewery and at Most Kroger's. Same with that. Well, most of the proceeds go to the Joe Burrow Foundation. What is going on, everybody? I say hi to everybody in the chat, but I want to get to the star of the show. It's Greg Luther. Hey, you're not the star. Are you the star? I, I don't know. I thought I, I, I guess I was for a second, right? Yeah, I, I think I confused it. Hold on. Let, let's let's get, get to the real star. Let's get to Duff. What's going on, Mark? How you doing, man? It's great to be with you guys tonight. It's going great, man. Absolutely. How, so how did you like the song? Did, did you like how you, how you were the one that ended it? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. And I'll tell you, wh whoever wrote that did a fantastic job. And again, the, <laughs> the rhythm and the beat to it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's why be Assad. He made that after you guys beat uh, Buffalo last year and he tagged out on Twitter. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. I need to play that. So oh, that was very, very well done. I'll tell you that. And I like the ice cave. I would like to be in there. It's better than my <laughs> office right there. So I like to be in with you. That's well done. It's pretty cool down here. This, this is where it's my little hideaway from from my my family. You know, and they get tired of you know hearing about Bengals twenty four seven. You know, they're like, go down there, go do your podcast, leave us alone. Okay, so that's kind of how that happened. So 
Mark, how, I got, we'll just get into this here. The 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 how to, they got to play as. I mean, we we you we did this a couple weeks ago. Greg Luther, I think, who does a great impersonation of it. You know, he sounds just like you. He does it better than me. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Greg. Really, really. Well, I'm not appreciating, but hey, that, you're the one that started, so you get all the credit. No, no, actually, actually, now you know Zach Taylor is the one that uh, uh, started the whole concept of they got to play us and and presented to the team the night before the game, and then I ultimately kind of jumped on it in the locker room celebration after the victory, and so it, then it became something from there. But Coach Taylor is the one that really put that theme and got that thing rolling and gave life to it. Well, let's talk about uh, Coach Taylor, Taylor and just the theme and the the atmosphere that he's created down there at, at Paycor. And I mean, he, him, between him and, and the Blackburns and Joe Burrow, I think has completely changed the, everything down there. I mean, Zach ha, has changed culture. He, he has certain guys that they want to draft, you know, certain players they want at a certain age and everything. And, and it's all come together and we've come this close and this year is going to be the year. I think they're done. We're going to get that Lombardi, but just, just talk about Zach and, and what he means to you and how the culture is down there. Well, he's done a tremendous job. I mean, and you know, I think you hit it on the on the nail, if you will, hit the nail on the head when you talked about the culture. He's established a very uh, player positive, uh, recognition filled, energy filled environment, highly competitive. Uh, and to get into this environment, you've got to be a, a you've got to be a winner. You've got to be a competitive person. You've got to be a person of high character. Through his leadership, the leadership of Duke Tobin and the personnel staff, coaches and players uh, working to get coaches and scouts working together have done an excellent job of selecting players either via the draft or the free agency to join this team to establish an attitude that I think is second to none. The reason we've had success, particularly the last two seasons, is because of this team's attitude. Every team's got talent. Everybody's got people that can run and can do this and do that. But you've got to have a uh, an attitude that where players really give a, a, a lot about each other, care about each other a lot, care about the program. And again, I think it started with, even with Mr. Brown and, and the Brown family, the Blackburn family, all of them kind of setting that tone, if you will, in terms of what we're looking for, not only physically, but certainly from a character standpoint and an attitude standpoint. And that's why this team is the way it is right now. Exactly. Greg, what do you got, man? So, Coach Duff, you were with the Bengals for two separate times, from the late 90s to early 2000s, Mm -hmm. and you came back in 2019. What is the big difference between being with the team the first time and and now? I would say say just what we've kind of been talking about. I think that the – I mean, we the evaluation process was was very good in those days too, but I think that – I think we delved into – deeper into the character – not character, the attitude part of the – of the player and 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 what they uh, what they bring in terms of their, are they unselfish are they a team first player in addition to being a first team player and I think that's again what Zach has kind of brought in two guys that 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 are are again highly competitive are going to work hard they're going to do it the right way uh, they're not going to let you down uh, all those type of attitudes and, and characteristics are part of what he has uh, you know put in motion here. Now, Mark, uh, let's let's just you are the senior uh, defensive assistant is a technical term, but mostly you, you work with linebackers. Is, is, am I correct on that? Well, I'm working more. No, I'm working more with the two outside linebackers, the, the Sam Hubbard's, the Trey Hendrickson's, uh, Cam Samples, the uh, Miles Murphy type guys. That's where I'm working most. Okay. Now, I, my background has been as an inside linebacker coach forever in the NFL. But right. when I came back this time, it, it kind of was to work more on the outside. Okay. And, and I've been very pleased and privileged to be able to do that. Well, let's talk about the Miles Murphy and our number one, number one pick here. And um, some people, I don't want to say they, they and that's, I hate people, I mean, it could be a bust. It's not going to be a bust. Two games. That's just pretty ridiculous for people ask me this before. But I, he hasn't shown up as much as I guess people expected him to. But I mean, I think he's going to be fine. How, just in your opinion, it's good. How, how is he doing? Well, I think he's coming along well. And and let me say this, you know, he didn't play in the second preseason game because he had a bout of COVID. Yep. So people, you know. I, I had that two weeks ago. It sucks. <laughs> you know, so, so he, no one got a chance to see him in that, that opportunity. Right. Uh, but he, he's a, first and foremost, he's a very athletic, talented young man. He's bright. He's respectful. He's a guy that came in here 
kind of not in a, in a pushy way or a braggadocia here, I'm here type guy, but a very humble guy, if you will, and has carried that on through his development here. In other words, he was, he's watching to see how to do it right, do it the right. right way. He's been keenly watching Sam Hubbard, Trey Hendrickson, our veteran players. And then he's had, the, I think, the excellent benefit of working with, I think, one of the very best defensive line coaches in the, in the NFL, and that Marion Hobby. Yes. Uh, yeah, Marion Marion's a, a great coach. He's a great fundamentalist. He trains these players well. And it's it's not by accident that our best two seasons have been since Marion's been here. Right. Uh, and so I would say that this young man's going to come along. We, we all want him to be Superman in, in the first practice, but uh, Miles is smart enough to understand he has to learn how to become a pro, learn how we do things or Coach Hobby does things too, and then put it into his game and, and let it flow. So I, I, I see him ascending. Uh, and, and again, we're all anxious for him to make those big plays, and I think they'll be coming shortly. How is uh, Jerusalem Osai look with his uh, his high ankle sprain? Was he I, he was I heard he's out there, but he's on the rehab uh, field, right? Yeah, he he is. He's but he's getting better and better. He you know Joseph's a a, a very uh, heartfelt kid. I mean, I think you know he's going to give you everything that he's got. I mean, you can see that in the Buffalo game when yes uh, we had a tough call and and that crushed him. Well, you want people that it hurts that that they care so much about it, and our team knows that about him, and so. He's going to, in addition to being very talented, he's working as hard as he can to come back and play. And so I think that, uh, uh, you know, we'll see him sooner than later. Uh, Jackpot Joey here, which is uh, Matty Myers. He's he's the one who started all this stuff. He he wants to know who is the funniest guy, uh, the guy that pulls pranks in the locker room. Uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, there, there's a number of guys. Uh, Sam Hubbard, to be to be honest, is a guy that'll pull some pranks. Uh, Cheedy, Cheeto, Cheeto is a uh, uh, is a is a pranker. Uh, so there's a number of guys in there that uh, Logan well, Logan Wilson will pull pranks. Jermaine Pratt, uh, <laughs> B.J. Hill is one of the biggest, as is D.J. Reader. So there's a number of guys on defense. Those guys right there, they're going to raise hell and have some fun. Now let's talk about my boy D.J. Reader and. and- I, I I always he's honestly he's my favorite guy on defense because I really think he is I call him the straw that stirs the drink when he's not in there the running defense is just not the same and I just I I get frustrated with the the lack of press he gets as far as all pros Pro Bowl stuff like that I mean yes he doesn't sack quarterback but he makes such a big difference I mean go watch the Tennessee playoff game two years ago just go watch him play. Yeah. And you tell me he's not an all pro. I mean, uh, well, you know, you're on it, Jeff. He he is, he's tremendous. I mean, again, and again, when you when you see how well we play, it's when he's in there, right? And so that correlates. I mean, first and foremost, he's an outstanding guy. Number one, uh, everybody respects him highly. Highly. Uh, number two, he's an outstanding athlete. I mean, he, right. this guy was also, in addition to being a dominant football player, he was a starting baseball player. In fact, mm-hmm. played uh, played third base. I mean, so. The big third baseman right there. <laughs> yeah, there is in the country, that's for sure. So, but but what he has done inside and, and is a run stopper and also a pass rusher, uh, that coupled with what B.J. Hill, the two of them, we are so blessed to have two guys that are doggone good players but also good athletes and also uh, care immensely about the team and the defense. So right. B.J. is outstanding. We, we, we need him, that's for sure. Yeah, you got anything, Greg? I, I got a question for Anthony. I can read if you want, want me to. No, um, so my question is obviously losing Jesse Bates and and Von Bell was obviously pretty hard. My question to you is, what do you see in the new safeties this year with just with Dax, with uh, uh, Battle, Scott, and Tyson Anderson, who by the way had a heck of a preseason. Yeah, you know, I think I, I've been pleased, uh, and, and I. Don't coach him directly, but I've been pleased with the athleticism that Dax has brought and Nick's brought to the position. Uh, they're both uh, as willing as they, they're anxious, they're willing, they, they're they're coachable, uh, they're effort filled. So coupled with athleticism, I mean that's something that you've got to have. The range that both of them have showed has been excellent at that spot. You've got to be if you're going to be a great defense, you've got to be strong up the middle. Uh, that's why DJ, BJ, inside those guys are important. Our linebacking crew and these safeties are important. And so that, uh, yeah, Nick has, I've been impressed with Nick's uh, contribution so far and also the, the 
uh, big playability that I think Dax Hill will bring to the safety position. Yes. Now let's get to, to your, your coaching career. You were a head coach at Holy Cross and Maryland. Holy Cross, you were 86 and 91 Maryland. You're, uh, well, it was from 92 to 96. I, I thought I had to, I, actually, those are the years you're on. I thought well, I, wrote years, yeah. I, yeah, I thought I wrote the record down. I didn't write the record That's okay. That's okay. Um, but I find it interesting as a defensive coach, you were a run and shoot offense. Now I know that was in Maryland. Did you have that at Holy Cross too? Oh yeah. Yeah. We ran a version of run and shoot offense, both places. And, and really what, how we came upon it was having to defend opened up formations. And that's what we, what we added to the run and shoot was a two by two or a three by one balanced offense in terms of opening formations and put stress on the defense. So we studied the, the run and shoot because we play it once in a while, but took the things we thought would be difficult for the defense and kind of melded them into our scheme, if you will, of offense. And it was very effective for us, highly effective at Holy Cross and pretty effective for us at Maryland. We broke all the passing records they had up to that. I, it's, a lot of them are still up there, aren't they? Well, I, I, you'd have to look. I don't know that for sure. I think perhaps they are. But well, that's what I read. <laughs> but, but yeah, well, we, we like to read those things too. But they, we, <laughs> I think that you know people started to catch up with some of that, so we had to change it some. But it was not a pure a Mouse Davis run and shoot, but right. a guy that's probably the best run and shoot coach ever was Mouse Davis, and we mm -hmm. visited with him too. So looked at things that we thought we could stress a defense with that had given us problems over the years on defense and melded it into that type of attack. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of, I mean, I remember when the run shoot came out, that was the craziest, craziest thing I ever saw. But I mean, if you look at what the Bengals do, there's versions of the run shoot in what they do. And a lot of NFL teams do to this day. It's incredible. I mean, yeah. And formationally and, and what you try to do in terms of attack and the defense, either the back end or the front uh, check with knees, RPOs, all this kind of stuff was, was stuff that, the run and shoot type of offenses we're doing back in the eighties before. So, I mean, it's a, it's kind of interesting to see how the cycle of football goes. And, and uh, it, you know, I, I was talking to a coach one time who was uh, a long time ago at Missouri. I mean, I'm talking like he coached there in the forties and fifties. And he said, Hey, you know, people are talking about the shotgun and, and empty formations. We had them back in the thirties and forties. And I said, well, God bless you. But I mean, that's amazing that, that, that stuff that, you know, it's tough to defend Mm -hmm. Sometimes cycles through not only college football but the NFL. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the Bengals with with all the wide receivers they have, and this guy's favorite player here, Yoshi Voss, uh, balling out in in a, a, a training camp uh, or the preseason. We we got more weapons now this year than than we had in the past. The the wide receiver room was good before. I mean, it was great before. I think it's. I don't know if there's anything bigger than great, but I think that's where they're at right now with with Ch with uh, Chuck Jones and uh, and uh, Yoshivas and also Trenton Earl because my boy Trenton had a really good camp too. Sure did, sure did, and and you hit you've hit it on the nose. I mean, you know you can't you just can't gang up on one or two of these guys because the other guy will hurt you. You know, so I mean to have the number of weapons we've got out there, including the tight end position. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's a oh my gosh it makes it makes us a yeah. difficult difficult team to defend and that's what you need and that kind of answering your question earlier Greg we've got more people that scare you on offense yes maybe than we had years ago I mean yes. and that we had not no disrespect to many of those players they were all excellent too we just yeah. have to have more of them now you, we don't have we you know we don't we have three or four receivers that scare you maybe versus two that did so. Uh, and of course, what the quarterback, what Joe does with the offense and the, our running game too. I mean, uh, it's you know you can't just say, well, if we take this player away or we stop this particular phase of their game, you you've got them stopped. Uh, we've got stuff that can take you all the way through. Exactly. Now, uh, Jackpot Joey here wants to know: Is Jackpot Joey the smartest young quarterback you've ever been around? Without a doubt. I mean, uh, he's got the he's got the personality of a, about a forty year old. I mean, I'm talking as far as his. And I say that with respect. I mean, he right. is a very uh, – He's probably more mature than I am. <laughs> yeah. And, and me. I mean, I know. I mean, his, his maturity on and off the field is mm -hmm. tremendous. And, and I mean, I, I, I've been – I can't find anything that you would say you don't like about him. I mean, right. he can run. He can throw. He's smart. He's poised. He's a competitive. He's aggressive. I, I nickname him Buckus because how tough he plays. I'll, you know, and, and so, I mean, this – Again, thank God we've got him. And, and, yes. You know, mm -hmm. he is such a, an impressive young man in every way, shape, or form. And that's not to be uh, overstating it. He really, right. really is. I told Pitch uh, a couple of years ago, our, our quarterback coach at the time, and currently, 
I said, you're ne you'll, you'll never have a guy like this again. I mean, this guy is a rare dude. And I mean, in every way, shape or form on and off the field, personally, athletically, mentally, he's unbelievable. That's, that's why I said we hit the jackpot when we got Joe Burrow. I mean, it's, I mean, nothing against Ken Anderson, nothing against Boomer Sias and, but Joe Burrow is going to be the best quarterback we've ever had in our franchise. I mean, it just this this run we've gone on the last three years is – I've been a Bengals fan my entire life. <laughs> like, this is ridiculously awesome and surprising how good we've been. Well, I feel your I feel your juice and your energy. I love it. And, and, and you just made a big statement, and, and I'm not going to argue with it, but for him to be the best and better than Kenny, you know, better than Boomer, I mean, there, there's those are two – that's right. I'm with you on that. But there, those are two t tremendous quarterbacks. I mean, yep. proven quarterbacks, yes. people that would love to have. And what this young man's done uh, in his career has been very, very special. And thank God he's a Bengal. Exactly. Exactly. All, all they left to do is go get that. Go get that ring. Go get that, get that Lombardi. What do you got, Greg? Got anything? For, anything else? I mean, my question is, Coach Lou. I mean, what what he's done the past couple of years, the way. The way how Coach Lee just knows how to adjust in like second halves at times, it, it's just incredible. I mean, did you did did he show that early on, or was it like just a big change to make? Because Coach Lou, I he, I, I'll just go out and say he is the best. I can't believe he didn't get a head coaching job. But that was right. great. For I, us. I think he's glad he didn't get the, the car. I'm glad he didn't get a coaching <laughs> job. He should have got a coaching job. I'm glad he did, but you know how that you know, I am with that. But I mean, Coach Lou, in my opinion, is the best fence coordinator in the league. Am I, am I wrong to say that? Well, oh, he's an outstanding coordinator, and and I've known Lou since he was a young college coach. I mean, since he was at Syracuse in 1990, as just a young coach, I've known him that long, and and uh, he's he's been a terrific uh, learner, uh, studier. Uh, you know, some people uh, just you know learn maybe a system and try to go with that. He's he's studied a lot of football, and so at number one, he knows a lot of ball. He's but he's been anxious to continue to improve. Sometimes people think, well, I've read this book. I think I got it now. Well, there's more out there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to his credit, he has, I think through his preparation skills, he's become a good instinctive play caller. He's been a good uh, adjuster, the, as you mentioned, and the staff has done a great job of adjusting too, especially at halftime. When you, when you see yes. some of the second half adjustments that this group has made, it's not always just Lou, it's a collective effort, but Lou certainly leads it and heads it. And thank God that, that, that Lou is still here. And, and you know, I, I shared with him, I said, you know, you're going to have to find it, it better knock your socks off if you leave here because right. we've got, yeah, a, right. we've got a phenomenal sit here. He's yes. got a phenomenal situation here with, with our city, with our current team, with our quarterback, with our head coach, with the ownership. When you look at what all there is that he's got a chance to be a part of as the defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. it better knock your socks off if you opt to leave here. Because exactly. and I'm not saying that to be anything but direct and true. Yes, exactly. All right, I know Greg's got to go, but everybody keeps on the chat keeps wanting you guys to do. They got to play us side by side. So if we can do that real quick before I let Greg go, I think I'd make everybody happy. Greg, Greg, you go first, and then then, then Duff, you can do it after that. Here we go. They got to play us. They got to play us. Woo! Let's Woo! go, baby. I'm fired up. Uh, Thanks, Greg. Take it easy, take care, guys. All right, uh, he's got to go to this fantasy. I know you don't. You, you got to get out of here pretty quick too, so I don't want to keep you any, any longer. I want to be very uh, uh, respectful of your time, uh, Duff. We can um, go a little longer. Okay, so you talked about the city, you know, and, and you see me. I go down to practice as much as I can. I love this city, but you. what you guys have done to energize this city, I mean, it, it's rubbed off. I think on FC Cincinnati, it's rubbed off, rubbed off on the Reds. It's rubbed off. I mean, hell, the Bearcats wouldn't kick ass. Saturday, I, I couldn't make it past halftime. It was too hot. But, I mean, we have become a winning city, and I think it has a lot to do with the Bengals. Well, in, in my opinion, it's Wincinnati. Yes, sir. And now it's Wincinnati. In other words, what you said is, is accurate. I think that the enthusiasm that's come along with the Reds here is they've, you know, from about midseason on, and people mm -hmm. are excited about that. They had 38,000 there yesterday in that stadium. Yep. I don't know what they had today. But uh, yeah, the soccer, as you said, the UC Bearcats and their program, Xavier basketball. Yep. When you when you look at all that there is in this town, and right now people, it's winning, and and you see more gear. Whether it's we love the Bengal gear, as you've got in the, in the cave there, but uh, uh, there's more gear of teams in Cincinnati and pride yep. in, in, at any other time. Mm -hmm. I've never seen 
I mean, there's more Houdan in this town in the last, in the last <laughs> few years. And I mean, I was I was here. I, I coached at UC yep. 1977 through 1980. So my point is, there's more Houdan. There's more, uh, you know, just great uh, components of what winning sports are all about in this town. And it's been a benefit for all of us. Exactly. I was at Kings Island today, and of course, I was wearing my I was wearing the, my, my my bucket hat and my bag because. Everyone's like, why do I always wear that? I was like, because I get burnt easy, okay? <laughs> I'm yeah. already red, so I try to cover everything up. That's yeah. why I'm strawberry. So, but I got more who days there. Like, yeah, one week away, I can't wait. I'm like, dude, I know. I, I, I well, cannot wait. Well, that's amazing. You know, I mean, I'll take it even a step further. I'm, I'm down at the, the Nebraska Pro Day. This is in the spring, and I got some Bengal gear on. And, of course, now Zach had had, uh, had, the, had played there and, and, and you know, had a great career there. But – uh, I'm walking around in from in the town of Lincoln to get to the stadium, and people are yelling "Who day? Who day?" And it's like the bangest thing I've ever seen. So I mean, my point is, uh, it's it's a it's the way it's supposed to be right now, exactly. and we're certainly going to work like crazy and make it even better. I'll tell you this, Dove. I, I went to uh, my wife is from Florida, so uh, we in t- 2020 we went down because the Buccaneers were in the Super Bowl, so we went down. And I didn't get, we didn't go to the Super Bowl. We're down there with her family watching it, but we got to go to the fan experience and everything. I'm wearing my my Joe Burrow Bengals color rush jersey. And this is, you know, he just got injured and all that stuff. And I just, I'll never forget this guy from Philly. I, I think it's, I think, I think it's from Philly. Walk around here. Bengals. Why are you wearing the Bengals? I'm like, because they're going to be freaking awesome. That's why. And then we went back to the next year after we unfortunately lost the Super Bowl. Stuff. I had so many people come up to me. Oh my God, we were rooting for you. We wanted you to win. I'm like, I, me too. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's, it's it's interesting you say that because I really believe, uh, you know, with Joe Burrow coming on the scene here in Cincinnati and all the good things he's done on and off the field and and many other addition of players, uh, Cincinnati has become a, a favorite team in this country. Yeah, and I think people have seen the uh, the rise of our program and and under Zach and, 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 and have really uh, enjoyed that pro- progress, that improvement and have identified with it. Uh, it. It almost correlates to when COVID was kind of coming out of COVID that our team kind of took off and right. people have kind of joined and it's get, given hope. It's given enthusiasm. It's given uh, all those things uh, for people to latch on to a a diversion, if you will, a winning diversion, a positive diversion. So uh, I think it's the timing of of, of the success of the program and the people involved and the energy that, 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 again, the the building here has created, it's Mm -hmm. been superb. I mean, you wouldn't believe how people have reached out to me just because this stupid uh, podcast I do. I've had people from Brazil and Ireland and, and England and, and everyone there. And they're like, you guys are all Bengals fans? Like, where the hell you been at? <laughs> but I, mean, yeah, well, no, they're, they're, I think the fact that they, they I think that uh, fans, like I said, across the board right now, it's, it's something that they can look forward to. It's something that's positive. It's something that gives everybody uh, uh, a great feeling. And so, yeah. And I'll tell you what, the, the stadium the, and the way the fans are right now and all that they've done, it's terrific. It's so, awesome. I mean, the, the experience that you can get when you come to Paycor Stadium is awesome. I mean, I if you can find a better uh, environment than we had when we say we played Miami or when we played Buffalo in the uh, first game. Oh, here, I mean, there, I mean, you couldn't – You could, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. I, I, I've got them right now. <laughs> right here. Exactly. I mean, that, that stadium was awesome. Now, I want to roll back to something you and me were talking about off air and about L.A. De La Cruz and how he's coming. In, and I call him the most electrifying man in baseball. Um, and actually, Greg asked you, yeah. would you take him on the Bengals? What position would you put him at? Well, I would take it. Like, I answered that very quickly. I'd take him in a heartbeat and I'd put him, <laughs> sneaker, I'd put him at wide receiver. Uh, because, I mean, first of all, his length, his speed, his athleticism, his quickness. I mean, the guy's a rare, rare athlete. And so, right. and what he's done to ignite the Reds and contribute there, I, I know, I mean, he's got a phenomenal arm, got a cannon, speed as fast as in the league. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, power, we can take it out of the stadium. So, uh, a, a wonderful athlete that we'd give anything to have. Exactly. Now, that, that, the thing I, I tweeted out here this, this summer was like, I think we need to do something for charity, you know, yeah. get, get T, get Jamar, you know, get some of the fastest Bengals. You know, pick the fastest Bengal, which whoever that is, which I don't even, I don't, I don't think it's Chase. I think it's, well, it might be T or it might be, uh, actually, Bo, Bo Jackson's uh, nephew might be faster. Yeah. Do, yeah. A, do a charity race. Yeah. I mean, 
after the season, we don't want to get hurt. We want to get the Lombardi. Maybe do a, a charity race down there at the banks. You know, Ellie versus the fastest Bengal and see, see who wins. We could put a couple of them up there. I mean, Cheeto yeah. would be one. Cheeto, Cheeto would be yes. One. Jamar would be one. T, all those guys. So, I mean, we – and and I would – we couldn't do that until after the season. Now We can't right. risk anybody getting a pulled hamstring. But Ooh, do right, right now, that would be an impressive – event seeing that and i would think the town would show up big time to see uh de la cruz rush run against a couple of our guys it'd be a special thing i think i think that would be awesome I, i'm looking forward to it. i cannot wait that next sunday we are going to be well you guys will be in cleveland we are going to be at rj cinemas it's a movie theater and i'm a west sider but this movie theater is on on the east side that we go and they're going to have it on a couple different screens they got yep. jackpot Joey beer flowing, wings. We got cornhole outside. It's going to be a complete blast. I am so fired up for this season, Dove. I cannot freaking wait. I, I, like, look, when we win, we win Lombardi. I'm getting the, the tattoo. It's going right here. I'm getting the tattoo. I've, 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 scoped, I've got the, the year, who day. Oh, it's going to be all, all big. I have a sleeve on there, and I cannot wait. It's going to cost me a $1,000. I don't care. It's going to be completely worth it. I cannot freaking wait till this season starts. I'm so excited for you guys. Joe Burrow is on the field. He's going to be back week one. You're going to be out there, and I cannot wait to find out what the what the new theme of this year is. You know, from they got to play us to why not us to whatever this year's is. I I'm I'm a little excited. <laughs> well, we're we're big time excited too. We got a lot of work to do prior to yep. uh, one o'clock on Sunday, but uh, we're excited about it too. We we've got some unfinished business for sure, and uh, coupled with uh, I think the attitude and the talent of this team, we're very excited about it. Exactly, I, and I, I can't wait to shut the Browns fans up because they're like, "Oh, we own, we own you guys, like, dude! You've seriously played us, I think, twice when we had our full team and you lost both times." So just it, just calm down. They're, they're, they're well, it, again, it's going to be our, our typical play one one game at a time and one play at a time, and they're a very talented team. They're, I mean, we're working like crazy as as we know uh, the the talent that they've got, and so it'll be a it'll be a very competitive game. We have high respect for them. And we're anxious to take them on at one o'clock. I, I can't wait to see uh, Orlando Brown versus uh, Miles Murphy. That that's gonna be a, a interesting matchup. I, I that's that's what I'll be watching. Miles Garrett, you said Miles Murphy. Miles Garrett, thank <laughs> God it. That's, that, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Miles Garrett, yeah, that's now, Miles Murphy is our guy. Anyway, okay. yeah. it's all it's all, it's all good. <laughs> hey, Mark, I appreciate you. This has been so much fun. I'm glad we could do this. And like I said, I, anytime you want to come on again, you, you know, I'll be down there. You know. Look, yeah, practice. I see you all the time. I, we're pleased that we do get a chance to see you all the time, but really appreciate what you're doing for our fans and for Cincinnati and the Bengal football. It's been awesome. And so keep up your energy, keep up your enthusiasm. It's been a privilege to be with you. Mark, I appreciate it, man. Back at you. Like I said, go get that win. And who day, brother? Who day? <laughs> all right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Mark Dufter is freaking awesome. I love that dude. He's been the nicest person to me every time I'm out there at practice. He's always yelling jackpot. We got to play us. And I mean, he's he's cool as hell. So that's what we have here in Cincinnati. We got awesome coaches. We got awesome players. We're gonna win this damn thing. I don't care what anybody says. All right, let's get the Facebook groups. Let, let me live stream. And as always, I appreciate every single one of you guys there. Who Day Nation, Who Day Legion, Bearcat Ruckus, Radical Reds, the Ohio State Bucknuts, the Ice Bar, and then you can follow me on all my social media platforms, all under Sports with Strawberry Ice. It's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Or X and TikTok. Uh, Twitter handle is at Jeff A. Trenopal. TikTok is at Iceman90. I will be pulling off the sound later on tonight, put it on the podcast on B Pod, Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, pretty much wherever you get your podcast. Please make sure you rate, like, and review. Leave a comment and a five star review. I would greatly appreciate it. YouTubers, my people, 2,335 subscribers. As always, I appreciate every single one of you guys. If you guys don't subscribe, I'm just a weird dude that talks to himself on, on, on YouTube. So I'm glad you guys subscribe. You've opened up all kinds of doors for me to get Duff on there for me. I've had Tim on there, Darren Simmons, a couple different players. I, it has been unbelievable. This is week one, baby. Football is back. Oh, my God. I cannot wait. I am so ready. RJ Cinemas, Sunday. We're going to be there. It's going to be a blast. The Jackpot Joey Beers will be flowing. The cornholes can be played. We're going to be watching it on the big screen. If you've never been there, you don't know what you're missing. You better get there. Start. I, I said 12 o'clock. Probably get there earlier now. That I'll probably get there around 12. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to win this Lombardi. It's coming this year, I'm telling you. And that's just sports, baby. See ya!